I'm going to speak uh, kind of low in this video. I hope the audio comes through, but there's uh, some people sleeping in the other room. So I just read the section on Christian mysticism entitled Encountering Christ. Uh, how does the Christian mystic describe an encounter with Jesus? What does the mystic see? What is the mystic experience? Um, I would like to ask that of any Christian who is watching that right now. Have you experienced Jesus or encountered Jesus? Had a personal conversation perhaps with Jesus? Um, as I read these mystical, mystical writings, they all have different ideas of, of their experiences when they encounter Jesus. Uh, I'd like to start off with a more modern writer than I've been reading uh, in this book so far. This has been mostly Middle Ages. But there is one section written by Simone Weil. And I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that French name. But she died in 1943, apparently of self-induced starvation. It's hard... There's a little controversy, I think, involved, but I looked her up on Wikipedia, and there's a pretty long article on this woman. So a lot of, I am ignorant of of these mystics. At any rate, uh, from her private notebook, which was published posthumously, uh, she encountered Jesus, who walked into her room, and this is what she describes. He entered my room and said, Poor creature, you who understand nothing, who know nothing, come with me, and I will teach you things which you do not suspect. I followed him. He took me into a church. It was new and ugly. He led me up to the altar and said, Kneel down. I said, I have not been baptized. He said, Fall on your knees before this place, in love, as before the place where lies the truth. I obeyed. He brought me out and made me climb up to a garret. Through the open window one could see the whole city spread out, some wooden scaffoldings and the river on which the boats were being unloaded. The garret was empty except for a table and two chairs. He bade me be seated. We were alone. He spoke. From time to time someone would enter, mingle in the conversation, then leave again. So it's almost as if Simone is uh, meeting a, uh, a uh, long-lost lover or, you know, two boats passing in the night. It's interesting when I read these uh, from medieval writers uh, because it's so far removed. But when I read this stuff from more modern writers, uh, I, I hate to be disparaging and I don't mean to me mean to be, but I have to wonder on a mental state, what is going through their mind? Frankly, when I hear somebody, even as a Christian, when I meet somebody who says they have encountered Jesus and describes a situation like what I have just read, I get suspicious, I get critical, and I think, what are you really seeing? What are you really experiencing? Uh, did you really experience Christ? Or are you having some sort of hallucination brought on perhaps by a, a sleep paralysis or something like that? Uh, these things do happen. So that's a side issue. Who the heck knows what really happened uh, in, when, when I read these things? I, I don't know these people. But it's just something that I do wonder about when I meet people who describe events like that. And I have met people uh, who have described events uh, like this. So, um, I guess we'll go back to the Middle Ages. One of the interesting things I read about in some of these writings, and I'm speaking of uh, Henry of Suso from uh, 1300, Julian of Norwich from uh, around 1390 in their writings, in their sermons, they describe th uh, attributes of Jesus that are decidedly female. Um, Julian of Norwich describes Christ as the Divine Mother. Um, Henry of Suso describes Jesus talking with the spirit of the believer, but the spirit is given a female gender, and I discussed this in my last video on the Trinity, 
that it seems that feminine aspects come out uh, more often than not than in, let's say, or more orthodox teachings. And I, I guess I talked about the soul in the uh, last video. And I've met Catholics, and as a Protestant, uh, coming from the Protestant tradition, I've always wondered about Catholics who who I thought were uh, worshiping or praying to Mary or what have you, uh, not really fully comprehending their, their, their tradition or their beliefs. And I came to realize that, you know, it seems that with a trinity with three masculine personages, some people just can't relate to that. They relate more to a mother figure. Um, that's just their mindset. So they put Mary, uh, for lack of a better term, into the Trinity and treat that. I mean, look at the cover of this book. There's Mary right next to Jesus. Um, I don't mean that to be disparaging. I don't, I, I don't care about whether it's, I'm not trying to say it's wrong or not. That's not the point. I'm just saying I just came to realize that some people relate to a mother figure more than a father figure or a female more than a masculine figure so, I, so maybe mary is needed somewhere in the godhead and she is treated as such in writings like this from julian of norwich where jesus is described as a divine mother and they and he encounters jesus uh, with that aspect pretty interesting um one of the most bizarre things and i've only got a few minutes left to talk about this but one of the most bizarre things about Christian mysticism is this thing called the stigmata, where imitating Christ means imitating his passion. And when following Christ, the Spirit may put the signs of the passion, the five wounds of the cross, onto the believer as a sign, or I, I guess it's a sign, of 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 imitation really bizarre that's always just really thrown me for a loop <laughs> it's just such a bizarre concept well one of the first accounts that we have is from saint francis of assisi from two of his followers a few years after he died two of his followers thomas of celano and bonaventure uh, describes how saint francis got the stigmata one night while praying so he's praying, and what appears before him is a seraph, a creature straight out of Isaiah 6, an animal with or a creature with six wings covering different parts of its body. And it's on the cross. I guess, is that a personification of Jesus or something? I don't know what. Here's what Thomas of Celano says about Francis of Assisi's stigmata. The seraph's beauty was far beyond all estimation. But the nailing to the cross, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm almost out of time. So I'm going to read this in an addendum to this video. This is, this is really something I want to read and discuss a little bit more. So I guess I'll just do a part two to this next. So I guess find the part two to this section and we'll go from there.